Rokan 23. That's right. It is here. It's not back. It's here. It's the first one. Join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators, passionate fans, and industry experts. It is all happening in downtown Waco across multiple venues, January 20th through the 22nd of 2023. Now, if you want to go, you got to get tickets, and tickets are on sale at roguecon23.com. That's roguecon, R-O-G-U-E-C-O-N 23.com. Be there. I'm going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. Let's go. Hi, this is Haley, the face of Waco Girl Does. You're listening to No Waco. I really do want to partner with Waco because um, yeah. I'm not from there. I am in Dallas, mm-hmm. uh, but Waco is the perfect place to do this. And so I'm looking three to five years down the road where it's like, there's some things that I didn't quite pull off this year that it's like, now let's, once we do the first year and, you know, the convention center sees what we're up to and can vouch for us, I'm hoping that I can get more of the city involved. I really wanted Parks and Rec, but I couldn't I, – I didn't get anybody to get back to me from Parks and Rec. But, like, next year, I'm hoping I can get them to come out. It's okay. They ghosted me, too, so it just happens. <laughs> yeah, but you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what the show is geared towards is trying to bring something to the Waco community mm-hmm. uh, that isn't there, that is new and is exciting. And I, I'm not trying to just be an outsider who shows up. Like, I just like, no, I want Waco to get involved. Like, let's get um, – like we're working with Nexus Esports. I was about to say, so they'll be running. Th- that's right. They're going to be running our modern game tournaments, like uh, the Smash tournament and stuff like that. So we got them on board. I'm excited about working with them. Um, I know some of the game stores and tabletop shops have been putting out flyers for us. Mm-hmm. And then with it, the, I don't know if you know everything that we're up to, but um, <laughs> we're doing physical activities. I'm jumping all over the place. I'm so excited. I'm sorry. Uh, we are doing physical activities, and one of them is our disc golf hole in one challenge, where we will be playing disc golf inside the Waco Convention Center. I'm not going to explain how we're doing it. I want people to show up and see it in person. But for that uh, that attraction, we partnered with um, one of the local disc golf courses that's south of Waco, and they're actually going to be there with a pro shop so that you can buy discs. Uh, so I, a lot of what we're doing is trying to introduce people to stuff that maybe they haven't done before. But it's like, hey, you know, this is a lot of fun. If you haven't done it, here's a chance to try it. And if you like, if you like it, you know, these are the people, and they're here to teach you how to get better at it, or introduce you, or let you know what you need in order to get started. And that's kind of across the board for all the attractions. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Um, so I know we've already jumped right in, but make sure you um, introduce yourself and tell us all about you. <laughs> uh, all right. So my name is Christian Dietering, and I'm like the guy behind the guy. I usually say, mm-hmm. you know, I am the front man for you know, things such as ATG Expo, but for the most part, I'm usually in the background. Um, like I said, you know, I produce the documentary, but I don't actually appear in the documentary at all, you know. Um, a behind the camera the ex- man. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm like the, the guy <laughs> behind the scenes who's usually setting up events and stuff. If people don't realize that I'm involved because it's not about me, it's about whatever it is that I'm doing at the time. So I feel ATG that. Expo. Yeah, you know, ATP Expo uh, for us is supposed to be fun for the Waco community and a chance for, you know, the the geeks and the nerds to come out and show off what they got because they I'm, they always have the coolest stuff, but it's always, you know, they don't think anybody wants to see it. And it's like, no, everybody wants to see it. Everything that was, you know, we didn't talk about when we were growing up, all that stuff's cool now. I mean, because mm-hmm. I read comics and I played video games in the 90s. Before it was cool. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't the hippest thing back then. Mm-hmm. And I always had my Nintendo, but, you know, I didn't really talk about it at school too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I just stuck with it. And all these little passions that I've had my entire life, have, you know, turned into me planning these large events where I try to 
know, introduce people to things that they might not know about, like comics or video games or anime. Uh, or, the, or in this case, with ATG Expo, we're doing the physical activities, which is, you know, maybe people haven't played disc golf. It, it did gain a lot of popularity with the pandemic because it's mm-hmm. something that is cheap and you can play outside. You can definitely social um, distance. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's kind of what we're trying to do is just introduce people to fun things that they may not know about. Or if it is something that people are into, uh, give those people a place where they can come out and hang out, you know, with kindred spirits and have a good time together. Yeah. So how did ATG get founded? So I used to run an event in Dallas, uh, with a group of guys, um, and the pandemic kind of ruined, uh, that event and not that we didn't want to yeah, not that we didn't want to keep doing it. It was that when the pandemic happened, you know, we all had to figure out what are we going to do now? And the team split up. I mean, one of the guys ended up moving out to California and is a QA lead for a video game company now. Oh, wow. Uh, but one of the people that I had been working with um, over the years at this other show uh, was one of the guys that I partnered up with uh, for this event. And he had been talking to me about, hey, do we you, we should do something in Central Texas. Uh, he's from Bryan, and so he kept kind of prodding me a little bit, like, we should bring something down here. There's nothing really, like, in Central Central Texas. Oh, and yeah. I, he was proposing this while I was doing the other show, and it was just one uh, – doing one show well takes a year. Yeah. That's how, that's how I feel about it. If, you know, if you really want to do a good show, you need the time to, you know, put all the pre-production in and make sure that, you know, you've got time to look over all the details. So and how so, long have you had for this one? Two years. Wow. Um, it doesn't, but it doesn't feel like two years because it, with it being a new venture, mm-hmm. we had to find, we had to find venues. And so there was like a week where we just kind of traveled Texas and we're looking at all the places and, Waco was one of the stops that we made, and it was just, I mean, super impressive. Like, So what was the draw was, of Waco? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't quite expecting it because I hadn't been to Waco in a long time. I went to school at UT, and so I would come up for, like, football games and stuff. But mm-hmm. even then, that's the old stadium. Yeah. You know, like, that's what I knew. I knew the stadium that was over on, like, the west side of town. Um, so everything's just changed. And so when we were going back, it was like, oh, let me say this. Uh, you know, the one place that I, I am super familiar with is health camp. Uh, anytime I'm passing yes. through Waco, I do, I always make sure that I stop at health camp and grab a burger and a shake and usually pot. Mm-hmm. Um, but that was kind of like the extent of me in Waco was me stopping at health camp as I was driving through. And so, and then. I say that, and it's like my sister used to do the roping, so I, I've, I've also been over to the rodeo. Uh, so so I've done you've, a lot been, there. you've been around, I was going to yeah, say. <laughs> but, but, you know, I guess what I hadn't done was downtown. And yeah. so when I went downtown, it was just like, oh, my gosh. Like, downtown is completely revitalized. The, the river walk is great. Just everything about the Wake Convention Center is amazing. Yeah. I, I'm – yeah, and then it's got the hotels next to it, which is always, you know, a good draw for a nice convention because people, the less that they, the, the less that they have to walk to go home, you know, <laughs> the easier it is for them to have a good time. And so we partnered with the Hilton, and I'm looking forward to everything that we're about to do because the hotels are so close. We get to do the after party. We're we're going to be doing a screening of the GI Joe movie, oh the animated gosh. film. The animated film, not the new one, oh, because that's if, okay. <laughs> if you know one of one of the our, one of our special guests uh, is Sergeant Slaughter. Shout out the wrestler, the wrestler, and one of the only real life people to be a GI Joe uh, in the animated series. I think it's him and Buzz Aldrin. I think are the only real life people who show up in the GI Joe uh, cartoon. Wow. So. We, that's one of our special guests, and in honor of Sergeant Slaughter, we will be doing a screening of the animated film on Saturday night. Um, but we'll also have the video game area open to free play, and we're going to have two uh, live music acts performing in the main hallway. Ooh. 
Yeah, so in the main hall will be Bitforce uh, and another artist that's coming with them, and I'm blanking on their name. So let me say that again. We're going to have Bitforce uh, on the main stage Saturday night from 8 to 10, uh, along with an opening act. And then, like I said, the video game area is going to be open so people can mill about. Oh, and then we're also going to have a bar. Oh, my gosh. So at, Are you guys at doing themed from, cocktails? Uh, I'm not, not this year. <laughs> um, but that's just because I actually – I'm friends with a craft brewery, and we spent a lot, of trying, a lot of time trying to see if we could get their beers sold. Yeah. Um, but it turns, you know, it's one of those things where like people don't know any of this stuff. They're just like, I wish you didn't have Budweiser. And it was like, you have no idea how hard <laughs> I tried to get like, you know, an IPA. Yeah. There, which I think, which I think we will have, but then it turns into like distributors. Yeah. yeah are yeah. they on the same? Yeah. And we do have some amazing thing. local craft breweries around here. So, you know, there's literally one right down the street from the convention center too. So you guys can always pop what's, over there. Yeah. What's What's the uh, there's a really nice alcohol that's from Waco, isn't there? I'm yeah. blanking on the, the Balcones. Name. So we have to... Balcones yeah, Distillery. Yeah. So they're actually a whiskey um, distillery. So you can go get some whiskey shots. And then for the craft brewery, uh, Brotherwell Brewing. It's literally right across the river on the other side. Um, we call it East Waco, and it has like a beautiful yard where people can hang out and be outside. And then indoors, it's very like industrial, very hangout, cool space. Yes. So. This would I would say that this was step one was me learning a lot about that, and then yeah. step two would be like next year where it's like okay, you guys, like here's what I learned and here's what I figured out. If we can jump these hurdles, then yeah, we can start bringing in people like them, so that it, you know it's not just. And I don't mean that. Like I'm happy that we're going to be serving alcohol. It's going to be a lot of fun, you know. Yeah. The convention the convention center is providing the bar and. That allows us to have a nice little after party on Saturday from 6 to 10. Um, we're going to close the vendor hall at 6, and then that way the vendors can take a break, uh, and they can hang out and relax. Um, it's just something that normally – or it doesn't always happen. You know, sometimes the show, it closes at like 6, and it can be a hard close. And if that happens, then it's like the people who are working the event don't really get a chance to walk around and see It's true, thing. yeah. Yeah, so the after party is kind of the way for people to get to enjoy the show if they didn't get to do it during the day. Yeah, that's awesome. And I know you already said you guys are looking at next year, so I can say that this is going to be a solid thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already asked for dates. Oh, my gosh. Um, wow. So we're looking at the dates for next year. Uh, and, I mean, we haven't even maxed out the facility yet, too. That's the beauty of working at the Waco Convention Center is that they do have a lot of room. Mm -hmm. And this year we're only taking up the top floor. Oh wow! And it's crazy. And it's crazy how quick the space disappears. I mm -hmm. mean, you think like, oh, this is gonna be plenty of space, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh my gosh, like there's no more room for tables. Yeah. So you guys are doing a full. You guys are gonna have vendors. Are you guys gonna be doing an artist alley? Tell me about some of the things that we can see. Yeah. So uh, there is a vendor floor. I think that we've got something like 60 vendors who are signed up and then there's an artist uh, alley that are all, I mean, that's all going to be in the main hall. And I think that there's uh, about 20 artists that have signed up. We've got some indie developers that are there and we'll be giving away an award for the best, um, best game at ATG Expo. Wow. And so the, the developers that are there will be participating in that. Um, so you can play some new games or, Games that maybe haven't come out yet that are there to be beta tested, have people play them for the first time. Yeah, that's so cool. So my husband, he is a big gamer, um, and we actually got to beta test um, one of the newer Kingdom Hearts games before it came out. Um, nice. Out at, at Disney Springs in Florida. <laughs> Very cool. But yeah, so that sounds like an amazing opportunity that I know a lot of people are looking forward to. What else would you say is your main draw? Uh, so we've got the special guests. Uh, we have voice actress Erica Schroeder and um, wrestler and real-life G.I. Joe Sergeant Slaughter. They're going to be there. Uh, we've got a bunch of cosplay. Um, Rogue-Con 23. That's right. It is here. It's not back. It's here. It's the first one. Join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators, passionate fans, 
and industry experts. It is all happening in downtown Waco across multiple venues, January 20th through the 22nd of 2023. Now, if you want to go, you got to get tickets, and tickets are on sale at roguecon23.com. That's roguecon, R-O-G-U-E-C-O-N 23.com. Be there. I'm going to be there. Everybody's going to be there. Let's go. Are you cosplaying? Sorry, we got, we got, <laughs> I, I, I may dress up, but I don't know that I'll be dressed up as any character. I'll, oh, I might okay. just be wearing a, a 70s leisure suit. That's usually my go-to Ooh, for events. Okay, you know what? That's a vibe. Yeah. Uh, we do have several cosplay guests, and we will be doing a cosplay contest. And these are legit cosplayers with some really nice builds. Um, they're going to have a section. I mean, we're going to have card games. There's a group that's going to be doing, I think, Magic the Gathering tournaments. Uh, we're going to have a tabletop section. Uh, we are running an Ultimate Monopoly tournament throughout the weekend. Oh, goodness. Um, <laughs> Ulti- Ultimate Monopoly is... Destroys friendships somebody- and families. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> somebody on the internet, as, as if Monopoly wasn't already hard enough, somebody on the internet made a board that's three layers deep. It oh, has an my inside goodness. inside track. And an outside track, and we built this uh, over the pandemic, and so that will be one of the things that, I mean, I don't know if there's ever been a public demonstration of it, so it might be one of the first times it's been out in front of the public where people could just play it. You guys uh, better so that's stream kinda it. that's kind of cool, too. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, no, we're going we're gonna to try and have a camera set up so that we can get footage of everybody playing it. All right, awesome. Um, I mean, there's just so much stuff. We've got the retro game tournaments. We've got the modern game tournaments. Um, if you're if you've been paying attention to the retro game scene, Tetris has had a giant revitalization in the past like two years, three years. And I have actually always been a part of the classic Tetris World Championship. I have run the Southern Qualifier for six years now. This will be the sixth year that I've run the qualifier. Oh wow! So. The, the Classic Tetris World Championship Southern Qualifier will be at ACG Expo. And the deal used to be that the prize was a plane flight and a hotel room to the Tetris Championship. Oh, my gosh. But because of the, but because of the pandemic, um, the championships have gone virtual the last two years. Mm-hmm. We're hoping they're going to be in person this year, but with the way everything's been going, it's always kind of hit or miss on what, what events are happening live and what events aren't. So this year, it's a $500 prize, uh, which if it does become a live event, they can use you know to buy the plane ticket to go to the show. Um, but they do, whoever wins gets an automatic entry into the Classic Tetris World Championship. And if you don't know this, uh, I think the current world champion lives in Fort Worth, and I believe he is a teenager. Ooh, great. Texas <laughs> I rivals. That, I, <laughs> I know. I think he's 14. I mean, great. Yeah. It's, that makes sense. It's that awesome tracks. how the, I know. It's awesome how the kids have picked up Tetris. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's started with a meme video on YouTube, and it's actually the leaderboard for Tetris. Like, and I'm talking old school Tetris on the, on the original Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And it, it's dominated right now from, like, ages 14 to 22. Yeah, wow, crazy. that's crazy. <laughs> all right, yeah, and tell where we can get all the information, where people can sign up, that way people know. Uh, ATGexpo.com. Um, that's where all the information is. All of our social media links are on there. Uh, you can sign up for the tournaments on there. You can buy tickets ahead of the show on there. Uh, parking, hotel information is on there. Pretty much the website is your gateway to everything, ATG Expo. Yeah, and how much are you guys doing tickets for? I, oh, man, I put me on the spot. I've been so busy <laughs> doing <laughs> Doing work at the warehouse that I keep forgetting to go back and remind myself. Uh, I believe they're forty dollars ahead of time and forty five at the show. There you go. That works. <laughs> All right. Well, I know that's so. It's so silly that I don't know that. But no, it's, it's like okay. that's how deep I am into prep right now. Where it's like. I mean, you know, we had all that stuff set up like six months ago, and I just kind of, you know, I'm running forward right now. (laughs) Yeah, I got you. I got you. All right. Well, um, the last question I wanted to ask um, was, what would you like to see more of from Waco? 
uh, involvement mm -hmm. next year. But it's understandable, you know. Uh, some of these people that we reached out to, you know, you know, yeah, I got lucky, you know, with the disc golf course, um, SVCC, who partnered with us. Uh, Shout out. Because <laughs> I know, but pitching, hey, we want to do indoor disc golf. Would you like to work with us and, you know, kind of man the attraction, but also have a store set up? Uh, you know, it's yeah. kind of a, like, how are you going to do indoor disc golf? And that's basically like all of our ideas that we had, where it was like, hey, we got this crazy idea that we want to do. Would you like to partner with us and like make this thing happen? <laughs> um, so I thank you to everybody that did work with us. And yeah. I look, you know, I just look forward to more involvement where it's after this year, you know, I'm sure people are going to be like, whoa, what was this? And how did I miss it? And it'll be like, yeah, guys, year two, it's happening. Like, let's get you guys out there. Let's, uh, like I said, the Parks and Rec Department, I would have loved to have them. They would have been great next to the disc golf thing. Yeah. Um, and that's just like one facet, right? Uh, there's like everything that they do that we could be telling people about. Yeah, definitely. All right. And then last but not least, time for shout outs. So you can shout out anybody, any partners, anybody that's helped you on this journey. I know we've already done a few, um, but here's your chance to make sure everybody gets their um, little piece in our podcast today. Uh, the Retro World Series, the Classic Tetris World Championship. Shout out the um, champion, that 14-year-old. Yeah, I think his name's Dog. <laughs> I know, up. I haven't met him yet. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to this event where I get to meet all these people for the first time. Um, I mean, there's just so much. Sergeant Slaughter and Erica Schroeder, thank you to our guests for coming out. Um, just, yeah, all the vendors and artists, just everybody who is believing in what we're doing, you know, because it is the first year. And, I, you know, we really appreciate that. Yeah, well, we are very much looking forward to it, and I hope a lot of locals are going to be showing up and supporting, um, show up, show out, um, and we are looking forward to this year. We're looking forward to next year. It sounds like this is a long lineage of exciting things that are going to be happening, and thank you so much for getting this all together, and we're definitely looking forward to it. Yeah, and I just, you know, I tell people, go check out the website. There's like, I'm just sitting here thinking about it. I didn't talk about laser tag. I didn't talk about the shooting gallery. <laughs> There's like all sorts of things that we're doing that I didn't even get a chance to mention to you. So look at the website and uh, come on out this weekend. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on today. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. All right. Thank you. All right. I think we're good. Um, thank you so much. I got the thumbs up. Um, so it sounds like we're all good for the recording. Was there any last minute things you wanted to say before you go? Uh, no, I hope I did okay. My mind's all over the place <laughs> right now with me getting ready. So. You did great. It sounds amazing. I am definitely looking forward to it. Um, once you said disc golf, my father-in-law, he's like a big disc golf person. So I'm sure we're going to try yeah, to show so up. <laughs> I, so we, here's what I'll tell you now that we're not on air. Uh, we're going to be setting up a batting cage inside the expo center. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so cool. So that that's how we're doing it, and it's uh, it's based on Price is Right. It's a disc golf hole in one challenge. We're we're going we're trying to see if people can make it on the first shot. Oh my you'll gosh! Get, I think you, uh, you'll get multiple tries, but the goal is to do it the first try. And then if you don't make it, you can practice. But, yeah, it's going to be like a 40 to 50 foot throw. It's not easy. But, it, you know, it, that's pretty much everything we're doing is it's not something that you can do right away. But if you sit there for a little bit, you should be able to get better at it and then, yeah. and then make it. Uh, the whole thing is designed to introduce people to stuff, mm -hmm. you know, in a way that is fun and engaging so that they will want to go back out and, and – you know, investigate and learn and participate on their own later on. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that one. That's going to be fun. Yeah, and um, hopefully, <laughs> and it is all weekend, right? So that's all on the all on the website. Everything it's all weekend. It's it's Friday, Saturday and Sunday, right? Both days. Yeah, Saturday, Saturday, ten ten a.m. to ten p.m. But part of the show will close at six, like the vendor hall mm -hmm. and the tabletop area. Basically, the ballroom and the vendor hall will close, but the rest of the stuff will stay open for the nighttime. All right. And then Sunday, Sunday, 11 to 5. 
Okay, cool. All right. Well, it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I really appreciate your time this morning, and I'm looking forward to seeing you this weekend. All right. You guys have a good one. All right. Thank you so much. This has been Haley. I'm signing off. Tune in every Friday for all of the events and activities. Now that you know Waco, just go. Go, Waco. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Join the ultimate celebration of digital content with its creators, passionate fans, and industry experts. It's all happening in downtown Waco across multiple venues on January 20th through the 22nd, 2023. Tickets are on sale now at roguecon23.com.